Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man. And as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. As always, I want to thank you guys for coming to my channel. And I'm going to do an analysis per request from a subscriber on the group. The English group from the 80s, Sade. And the lead singer name was Helen, or is Helen A-D-U, Abdu. Because uh, a lot of people think her name was Sade. That was the name of the band. She was Nigerian born in the band. It's an English man. And... My thoughts on Sade is this. I got nothing but good thoughts on that band because several reasons. Love their sound. Two, when I was in the band during that time, we played a lot of their stuff. Real simple to play. You know, you, you listen to their stuff as far as their arrangements and instrumentation, and it sounds real busy and extremely jazzy. But when you get to sheet music, and say, whoa, you know, like three or four, well, four chords. You know, they were very complex as far as their arrangements, but the actual composition was not complicated, like a Earth, Wind & Fire song or Steely Dan song or um, Luther Vandross. Those are busy songs. I mean, when you look at the chords and look at that song, but like, whoa, you know, but Chardet, it's like, okay, okay, this chord for so many measures, then this chord. So it's not a, a bombard. It's not bombarded with a lot of quick chord changes. It's like they let their music breathe. And uh, they're definitely in my top all-time top fan, top five favorite bands. And one of the first things you notice as a musician when you're playing Sade stuff, you can tell that a lot of the songs were written on either keyboard or bass because them bass lines are just unbelievable and very memorable, you know. And I, when I think of Sade stuff, when it comes to the bass heavy stuff, I kind of think of some of the Rick James stuff. And I could tell that Rick wrote a lot of his stuff on bass because that bass line just stood out. But uh, nothing but good things to say about Sade. You know, uh, it was a great era during that time. Uh, very, She's a very beautiful woman. She can sing. One thing I can say about Sade, which is a, another plus, is this. When they release their, and I got it around here somewhere. I don't know where it's at though. It's down here somewhere in my DVD collection. When they release their uh, live concert on DVD, you stick that DVD into your DVD player. And if you got decent speakers on your, your TV system, it sounds like a concert. You could actually tape that DVD onto a CD and just play it in your car because it was it sound like a, well-polished studio album but yet it was done live so they were extremely attention to detail as far as their sound whether it's in the studio or whether they perform it live another artist that comes to mind in that same vein is Sting. the majority of the the concert dvds he released not all not the majority all of them are uh, cd quality you know matter of fact i did what i just mentioned it you know you could do I had a DVD burning and I burnt the, the, the concert audio onto my CD player, put it in my truck and just driving around listening to it. It was just that clear and clean. But a lot of other artists, which I won't even give names to, uh, you bad their live concert of DVD. Sound like shit. PA system, the vocals too low or the music too loud, the instrumentation is not balanced. You know, and I understand they're not working with the with the budget of a Sting or a Sade, but even on a modest budget, if your attention to detail, you can make your sound decent or should I almost say decent good. Because when we were first starting uh, and cable TV was coming about and the big thing in Chicago at the time was can TV and a lot of the local actors trying to get on these uh, cable channels and. Uh, when we perform at these functions, people that were there, representative of the uh, of the, the channel, said, you know, we can get you on this on this particular show. And I used to watch some of the shows and I liked it, but I turned it down because I said, when I listen to the audio, when those bands go on on performance on those shows, they sound terrible. And I'm like, uh, unless you're going to allow us to bring our own PA people in, which they wasn't. I'm going to have to pass because I'm like, I don't want to go on national TV and my t my band sound like shit, you know. And some of the band members were kind of upset because they just wanted to be on TV. And that was all they was thinking about. I'm like, I want to be on TV too. But when I'm on TV, I want to be representative, represented in a very professional manner where our sound is good because our sound is good. And I want that to be able to be projected through TV. And if it can't, we got to pass on this. Trust me on this one. Hold out. Until, you know, something better comes along. And then we, you know, we, we get our exposure. But 
the majority of those channels, unfortunately, kind of kill bands as opposed to helping them. Because, again, I'm sitting here just cringing. I'm listening to some of these people on that. The performances because of the PA was so terrible. It's like, man, this is worse than a bad lounge night on a Saturday. But I'm going to wrap the video up because, again, uh, it was about the group Charday. But uh, that's one thing that I noticed about Charday. Whether they in the studio or whether they performing live, their sound is tight, it's clean, it's crisp, it's balanced. You know, pristine. So on, on that note, I'm going to sign off until next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.